In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're reminded in the scripture that as Jesus began his ministry, as we're told in the uh, Gospel of St. Mark, that he said, repent and believe the Gospel. And thus, we begin with a word of repentance. Well, Lord God, Heavenly Father, we come before you and we know that we have sinned and fallen short of your glory. We ask your forgiveness. And we ask your empowerment to be able to go forward as people that show forth the light of Jesus Christ. You promise us as we repent of our sins that you will forgive us. And so we claim that promise in and through the Lord Jesus. Amen. I thought today we might uh, take a look at the text that would normally be assigned in the more liturgically oriented churches for this particular Sunday, which is the fourth Sunday after Easter. The first lesson comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, and I'll read verses 41 through 47. So those who received the, his word were baptized, and there were added up on that day about 3,000 souls. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. And all who believed were together. And they had all things in common. They were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received the food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. I thought this text was especially um, helpful in the situation that so many of us are finding ourselves in, in this uh, time when we're supposed to uh, stay at home and a uh, time when uh, there's a, a real challenge that's going on in terms of uh, our, uh, well, our ability to be able to conduct business as usual. There will be people that are winners and there will be people that are losers in this particular time. And we find that in the text that, uh, again, is fortunately there for this particular Sunday. Well, indeed, there's a little bit of a similarity between what was going on with the, uh, the, the apostles and the other disciples and some of the things that we're experiencing. They had still a reeling from the effect of the, the disaster of the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as time went by, well, they got more information. There were others that had things to be able to share that caused things to change, caused things to, instead of being so dismal, to be a little bit more hopeful, to be something that, again, would... Well, change, frankly, so many lives forever. Uh, the, the, the changes would be long-lasting. Again, uh, they would be of different kinds for some people. There would be a long-lasting change in terms of their economic lives. That's true then and now. There would be people that would certainly have a change in terms of their eternal lives then and now. Well, what are the things that we find in the uh, scripture that we're encouraged to do from out of this text? We find that the people were devoted to the apostles' teaching. Well, that is, they were grounded in God's word. The word of God as we find it in the Holy Scripture, and especially God's promises that are contained therein. That's what makes the Bible ultimately good news. 
It, uh, it tells us of God's love and concern for us, and especially it's something that he demonstrates in the person and work of our Lord Jesus Christ. We find that the scripture tells us about being grounded in God's word. The last book of the Bible, commonly called the book of Revelation, or by some, the apocalypse. Uh, in Revelation 3, verse 3, we're told, hold fast and repent. Uh, again, we need to turn from our sins and turn away from ourselves and unto God and count on uh, him to be our strength and him to be the one that will deliver us. Uh, I've always loved the King James translation of Revelation 3.11, which was assigned to me as a confirmation text. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. And later, or earlier in the book of Revelation, just a chapter earlier, we have Revelation 2.10, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Well, there we see the promise of God. And well, there's a response that's called for out of us, and it's a response that responds in faith and in trust in God. It does things his way instead of our way. Well, we find that accompanying that is this, this raising of sights from the things that are so well, of this world and temporal, and raising our sights to those things that are eternal. That's where God wants us to be especially focused. And this is the reason why there were so many people that were called to be martyrs. Well, they certainly showed that they had their eyes on the right thing. As we see the people in the uh, Gospels, like Caiaphas, the high priest, who, well, he maintained his position and whatever kind of perks there were with it for just a, a few years. And in it, well, he sacrificed his eternal soul and caused others to not be able to see the importance of turning to the Lord Jesus Christ and to uh, abandon their worldly ways. Uh, this is also certainly true of somebody like a Pontius Pilate. Oh. What did these people do empowered by God? Well, the same things that we should be doing as the church today. We find that we need to recognize our need for one another. Jesus calls us to follow his new command, love one another as I have loved you. We need one another. We all have different talents and abilities that the Lord has given us. Ephesians 2.10 reminds us that uh, after the wonder of Ephesians 2.8 and 9, where we're told we're saved by grace through faith, and that not of ourself is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast, well then, good works are talked about in Ephesians 2.10, and that is that we are God's workmanship, and we're to walk in the good works that God has prepared beforehand for us to walk in. Well, that's to say that God knows that he designed you to be a special part of the body of Christ. And we need to appreciate one another and not have the, the eye say to the ear, I don't need you, or vice versa. We need to play the role that well, we have affirmed by the church that well, it makes a positive contribution. I remember once... Uh, being a guest preacher and talked about uh, an aspect of this text and made the comment, well, if you're the only one in the choir who thinks that you have a good voice, you might think again. Of course, a lot of people at that church came into me afterwards because I guess they had just such a person. <laughs> well, finally, we're going to find that, yeah, ultimately, the body of Christ will say, yeah, you're such a blessing. This is something that you can do. And there are so many jobs that need to be done to be able to move the mission of God forward. Some people have great compassion and they are the ones that uh, 
especially look at those that need special help in this world. And I'll take a time to take care of the people that need care, need clothing, need food. They have a lot of uh, important social outreach. There's others that are so gifted in terms of their ability to be able to uh, cause us to have our spirits raised in terms of their ability to use musical gifts, poetical gifts. There are others that, well, they make sure that the church is a place where people want to come and hear the word of God because they take care of the grounds and they make sure that it reflects the fact that a place that's dedicated to God, well, ideally, it won't be something that looks terribly shabby because that's not a good statement about the people that would, I want to say, uh, want to honor their God with a place that at least began to be speak of his glory. Uh, it is interesting, this recognition of need for others uh, and to serve others in love and compassion is something that even some of our children are taught in school. Maybe you had the same experience I did. I remember when I was in grade school, I heard the story, the European folk tale about stone soup. And so it is that there was the uh, men that came with little more than a big pot and they put water in it and found a stone and put it in. And when they had asked the people before for something to eat, well, they got no takers. But when they said they would share and they said, oh, this is delicious soup, but it could use just a little bit of a garnish here and there. Well, they got everybody in the town to donate something, some carrots, some little bits of meat, others other kind of vegetables, and indeed the whole town shared in what was a very wonderful meal. Uh, that's a secular approach, and the only problem is that it uh, emphasizes the ingenuity of uh, some human beings in terms of the way that they solved their own problem to be able to eat and that they did not only bless themselves but bless others. I like the account in 1 Kings chapter 17 where we read about Elijah and the widow of Zarephath. God told Elijah to go and to talk to this widow and said that he had appointed her to be able to take care of Elijah's needs. And sure enough, well, as she took care of Elijah's needs, God saw to it that miraculously well, her food supply did not go down, even though well, it was something that was a wonderment. Well, by helping this other person, won't I be hurting myself and my son? No, not the case at all. God provided there's another more modern account of that in Corey Ten Boom's book, The Hiding Place. And she tells of her experience in a concentration camp in which uh, somebody had got a bottle of vitamins and they dosed out the vitamins to people every day in terms of the uh, prisoners amongst themselves. And they found that, well, this one bottle seemed to never go dry. There always seemed to be enough. And we're reminded of the people that uh, enjoyed the manna in the wilderness. Well, God made sure that they were fed. They were fed by his hand. It won't always happen in the way of a miracle, but there are those that uh, they can see the hand of God. Another story about a prominent Christian who ran a orphanage. And, wow. Uh, there was a day when they didn't think they would have any food to serve anybody, and he said, set the table. And he went and he prayed. And sure enough, all kinds of people remembered that, oh, it's been a while since I've given something to the people of the orphanage. And they came that day, and instead of being little or nothing to eat, well, they had one of their bigger breakfasts and feasts. Uh, uh, the power of prayer, a miracle? Some might count it as some. Uh, finally, God in his almighty power works in various and wondrous ways to take care of his people. Some of our people, after our shutdown, 
will need just such help. And we'll certainly want to be sensitive. Some of you might be amongst those that need the help. Others of you will be those that will be uh, in a special part of the uh, lives that you have to be sensitive and say, oh, there but for the grace of God go I, let me help this person. There's another uh, place that uh, Martin Luther especially loved to bring sermon illustrations from. That was Aesop's Fable. And in Aesop's Fables, you'll remember the fable of the lion and the mouse. Uh, when the lion was woken up by a mouse, uh, he was angry at the mouse, and he was one that was threatening to, to kill the mouse and say, hey, um, take this for bothering me. The mouse begged for mercy and even said, someday I will help you. The lion laughed but let him go. And sure enough, the day came when the lion was captured in a strong net. And the mouse happened along. And uh, while it would have been the death of the lion, who would have been put into some kind of a thing to have people uh, take their, their uh, I say, hunting trophy, the mouse gnawed through the uh, uh, net and caused the lion to be able to go free. We want to be able to understand that in the body of Christ, we have all kinds of people, some that have obvious great talents, others whose talents aren't as obvious, and yet God has created them for a purpose, and who knows, it might be just that that purpose is the one that someday we need desperately. I'm reminded once of a, a time I was on a, a radio show called Religion on the Line. And there was a Catholic priest who told this story that came out of his parish. He had a, a parishioners that had a little child and he always thought that the name of the child was Joey. And then he came to realize, oh no, when he heard more distinctly, the name of the child was Joy. The child needed a lot of extra attention from everybody in the family. But it was something that caused that family to shine and to be one where they were all marked by wonderful unselfishness and care for everybody else. Oh. The little child brought the best out of everybody else in the family. And oh. That was what God had for that child to be somebody that made an incredible difference for the people that knew that family and, of course, for the family itself. We want to take a look and we see that the way that the people remained steadfast in their faith to God was not only through the word of God, but again, the promise that we find in the sacraments. In the first verse, we're told about the importance of baptism. And there God makes mighty promises, the forgiveness of sins, the bestowal of the Holy Spirit. Or remember the word of St. Peter in the book of Acts as he is preaching and he talks, Repent and be baptized every one of you for the forgiveness of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And of course, the other wonderful sacrament is the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. And that's referred to by the breaking of bread. That's sort of a technical term in the uh, early church. And yeah, there was another place where Christ could be present among them. This was different for the apostles because at first there was the crisis that, oh, they'd been following Christ and they had his physical presence. Now, well, they had his presence, but it was in the sacrament, and it was in his promise that where two or three were gathered, uh, they would be able to sense that his spirit was there. He would be in the midst of them, empowering them. He would be in the midst of them, continuing to forgive them. That's our real source of strength. We find also that 
We see the early church growing in their devotion, in their time to contemplate. This is one of the things that we can do when we're forced to stay at home, to contemplate the importance of what God shares with us in his word and what he's doing in our lives. Uh, not a lot of people that are spending that much more time watching television and the like. Well, I'm not going to try to condemn all television watching, but at the same time, uh, it would be good that people spent more time contemplating the wonder of what the promises of God have for them uh, to go forth. Of course, this is caught up ultimately in some kind of worship of God. For right now, we're not allowed to worship in our places of worship, like our churches. But uh, when that day comes, we want to have that much more joy. But remember, we can worship also at home. We can take the time, as they did, to pray and to know that God hears the prayers of his people and that uh, he responds. And it's a great time in our prayer, as we uh, say, seem so often in many uh, a conversation to want to have our turn to talk. Well, God talks to us in his word. We get to talk to him in prayer. And we don't want to tell God what to do, but we can ask him. Ask him as dear children, ask their dear father. And we can be sure that God will give us that which is good and not evil. Because well, if we ask for a piece of bread, God won't give us a stone or a snake, uh, as we're promised in the uh, scripture by the Lord Jesus himself. Finally, we want to see that in that contemplation and worship, it caused people to have changed lives. St. James says it so well, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Well, we want to be people that let the Holy Spirit work in us so that we can make a difference. So we can make a difference not only in our lives, but in the lives that are in around us, in the lives of our family, in the lives of our friends, in the lives of those who might at first be our enemies, but may come to be our friends. We do remember the incredible change that took place in St. Paul, who started out as an enemy of the church and participated in the execution of St. Stephen. And then, well, by the power of God, and you can be sure many prayers, he turned to be one who made such an impact on so many lives and turned them from darkness to light. This is one of the reasons that God would even have us pray for our enemies. May we uh, take these things to heart and hear the word of the Lord and follow the example of the early church, letting Christ reign supreme in our hearts. Amen.
Let us pray. Let us pray first the prayer that has been ascribed to St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek as to be consoled, as instead to be one who consoles. Seek not to be understood, as to instead understand. Seek to be loved, as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. O oh Lord, we bring these things to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that you would be with those who are in authority. Please give them wisdom at this time. And grant that they indeed might be public servants, eager to serve rather than to be served. And grant that indeed that our nation and the world might go forward instead of backward. Finally, Lord, we know that you have a plan, and we know that, well, this world is one that will pass away, that you will finally inaugurate the fullness of your divine kingdom that will last forever where all sin will be taken away and only that which is wonderful and good will abound oh lord give us patience until that day maranatha come lord jesus amen now may the lord bless you and keep you May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.